Good evening. Welcome to our Bi our Wednesday night Bible study. Gonna wait for people to join on. Uh, it's open to anyone, so anybody can join in and comment. So we'll start with some jokes to warm things up and to uh, use up some of our time. Okay, the first time I got a universal remote control, I thought to myself, this changes everything. There's another joke that I missed, I think, that I liked. What day does an Easter egg hate the most? Fridays. Oh, I see Rick popped up. Hey, Rick. And Melinda, maybe. <laughs> I went to a bookstore and asked the saleswoman where the self-help section was. She said if she told me, it would defeat the purpose. <laughs> Who else is there? I got a few more people. <laughs> Two antenna met on a roof, fell in love, and got married. The ceremony wasn't much, but the reception was excellent. Oh, the locks are there. Hi, locks. Yeah, if you're here, say hello. Say hello in the comments. <clears throat> If you can smile when things go wrong, you have someone in mind to blame. How do you make antifreeze? Steel or blanket? What else we got here? We got Rick, we got the locks. Probably have Kristen in there. Oh yeah, this, hopefully this isn't uh, too soon, too soon. What's the difference between the bird flu and the swine flu. One receives tweetment, the other receives an oinkment. A few more laughs, that's good. How many will do? A few more people in here? Mm -hmm. I don't really get this one. How long have I been working for the company? Ever since they threatened to fire me. <laughs> oh. I got that one. <laughs> Oh, this is a somewhat familiar joke. What did the daddy tomato say to the baby tomato? Catch up. What's brown and sticky? A stick. What time did the women what time did the woman go to the dentist? Two thirty. And we'll do a couple more at least, I think, here. So we get uh, everybody in, I think. Uh, okay, why don't seagulls fly over the bay? Because then they'd be bagels. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to try this one. It's long, so I didn't read it all the way through. During an exam, a police recruit was asked what he would do if his job required him to arrest his own mother. His response was, call for backup. Oh, hi, Len. Oh, I got the Clarks here. Joyce is here. Hello, Joyce. Okay, we got a bunch. So I'm going to do probably one more. Oh, Tina loves the groaners. I guess that's what these are. <clears throat> so what can you sit on, clean your teeth with, and eat soup with? A chair, a toothbrush, and a spoon. Okay, this will be the last one, I think. Why did the Scarecrow win an award? Because it was because he was outstanding in his field. Well, there's no laugh from that. Oh, there we go. That's good. All right, so we are going to go. It's a hot day today, at least for us. If Carl's watching, you're going to laugh at us because it's probably not that hot to you, but it is to us Canadians. So I'm going to go out into the backyard, and we're going to do a little bit of an activity. And it involves... Uh, well, it involves, it, it's a face mask, but not the type you think. It covers the eyes, not the mouth. So let's go outside. Oh, Nate's here, hey Nate? So we're gonna go outside. I'm gonna put on my knockoff Crocs. They're actually called dogs. <laughs> so they're not very good. Okay, so we're going outside. And we have set up, oh, I'm going to walk around this a little bit. We have set up a small obstacle course. So I've got some various household items just kind of around just to make a bit of a course. And they had to include, got to include toilet paper and all this with the way the world's going. And 
my tasks in this is to put the ball in the recycle bin and I have to pet the snout of the unicorn. Those are my tasks. <clears throat> and I've got someone off camera directing me. And it may not seem that hard, but let's see if I can get this lined up. I think that works pretty good there. The task is going to be a challenge because I have the mask. I've got this blindfold on. So I'm going to be directed. So I'm going to be following instructions uh, as I'm directed through this course to do these tasks. So I'm going to start. I'm going to stand over here. And then I'm going to start getting instructions. Can't see. Blind. Okay, go. Take four steps forward. One, two, three, four. Turn 90 degrees to the left. Take two steps forward. Turn 90 degrees to the left again. Take one step. Step forward. Turn 90 degrees to the right. Uh, bend over and pick up a ball. I guess one step forward. <laughs> one step forward. And pick up the ball. Oh, ball. Take one step forward and place it down. A little to the left. <laughs> pick it up again, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So I did? Turn a little to the left. Okay. And then place it down. Okay. Good. Turn 180 degrees. Left or right? Doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, uh, three steps forward. Turn about 90 degrees to the left. Left. Yeah. Take one step forward. Uh, turn 90 degrees to the left again. Move up, like. Reach your left hand out and pet the creature. Oh, there it is. I got the creature. I got the snout. Wait, there it is. Not very bright. <laughs> <coughs> All right. So I gotta give you. I gotta show you this unicorn again. This thing's awesome. We did some work on this thing. So this is our friend, the unicorn. I petted his snout. He's wonderful. All right, back inside we go. It's kind of a shame because it's really hot in our house. We don't have air conditioning like like Carl might out in Texas. <clears throat> and back inside, my dogs off, which are actually kind of Crocs. All right, we're back inside. So we did a bit of an example there of somebody following instructions. So we had me uh, walking around and someone off camera who I'm very closely related to uh, gave instructions uh, to guide me through the course. So it's it one of those things where I'm the follower and she's the one who's the leader. She's the one telling me where to go. So we have a bit of a partnership there. So that leads, leads to our first question. Um, in this exercise, we had to have a partnership. Each person had to play their part to be successful. Uh, if, we, if I was going to pet the snout of the unicorn, uh, we both had to do our parts to play uh, in order to achieve that goal, to be successful in our goal. So my first question, and again, this is, this is wide open, so you can uh, put your answers in the comments, and I'd encourage you to do so. Uh, what does it take for a partnership to work? So what does it take for a partnership to work? Uh, it could be kind of any number of things, but if you are in a partnership with somebody, uh, you're working together uh, with somebody, maybe a group of people, just maybe one other person on something, what does it take for this partnership to work? Um, in our case, in the little obstacle course that I had to, to, had to do, uh, the guide had the knowledge. Uh, I had a little bit of knowledge because I set up the course. Uh, I guess that's a bit of a spoiler. Uh, so I sort of knew where I was going to go. Um, but the guide essentially has the knowledge. Uh, I actually did get kind of turned around there. I didn't really know exactly 
which way I was facing at one point. Not exactly. Uh, so there is uh, one aspect of it where the guide has knowledge and the follower, and Rick just mentioned it, trust. Tina just said it too, trust. Um, the follower has to trust. I was blindfolded. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but I put our, our kind of lounge chair by the stairs. I didn't want to walk up the stairs, so I made sure I put something big and heavy there. So if I tried to walk that way, I didn't fall off the, off the whole deck. But it is one of those things I have to trust because I can't see. Uh, Joyce says both people have to participate. So again, both people have to do their part for it to work. Both people have to, to fulfill their role to accomplish the goal. Uh, there has to be commitment on both sides. Uh, if one person, if, you know, the person giving me instructions just says, oh, okay, I'm not gonna do this anymore, and just took off, you know, I'd be kind of, I wouldn't be able to finish, I wouldn't be able to do it. I could maybe try and kind of fumble around and try to find it, and I might've got lucky, but you need that commitment on both sides, that dedication. Uh, you need honesty. Uh, that's where I might have trust, and the guide has to be honest. If they, she just wanted to play tricks on me and make me bang my shins on something, she could have done that. Uh, Rick says, safety first. Good job. So that's good. <clears throat> and I know this is good. It was a misspelling, but that's okay. It's one of those things where you do need those things. You need both people, both sides of the equation for a partnership to work, to accomplish the goal. So if you go to Romans chapter 8, that's the first passage we're going to start with. Uh, last week, we talked about acceptance. Uh, we talked about how Jesus is knocking on the door, and we have to answer uh, he's ready and willing to accept us in. He's ready and willing to accept us. But we also have to accept him by opening the door. We have to choose to accept him and accept what he's offering to us. When we do answer, we are adopted into the family of God. And that's the word we're going to look at tonight is adoption. Now, last week was acceptance. This week is adoption. And we are adopted into the family of God when we, when we answer the door and we accept what Jesus is offering to us. So if you go to Romans chapter 8, we're going to read verses 14 to 16. Romans 8, verse 14 to 16. It says, For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves, so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption into sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. We are adopted into sonship. Again, that's... So when it says sonship, it doesn't mean males only. It's like mankind, where it's just humankind. So we as people are, are brought into God's family. We are adopted into his family. Uh, and I brought up that idea of partnership. And it might be strange to think of this as a partnership, because it is an adoption. And we obviously have um, two very different roles and two very different uh, beings in all this. We have God and we have us. But it is similar to a partnership in the sense that we do need commitment. We do need dedication, honesty, and that's required on both sides. Uh, it's not just on God's side, and it's not just on our side. Both sides require that commitment, the dedication, and the honesty on both sides. We can trust that God has done his part. Uh, he has been, well, Jesus has been knocking on the door. Uh, he's been doing that part and offering us this gift of salvation, offering us um, himself and his teachings and that way to salvation have our sins forgiven and it's up to us to accept it's up to us to do our part as well it's not purely one-sided uh, sometimes you can get that maybe mentality where i don't know maybe god owes you so yeah I'm, I'm basically a good person so he owes me he has to give this to me regardless of what i do um, i really just believe in him and that's all i really need you know you might be saying that to yourself but it does take both sides uh, even in an adoption, if you think of a, a family adopting another child into their family, the parent and child both have responsibilities if the adoption is going to work. And it is very s similar to God adopting us into, our fa into his family. Uh, we have our responsibilities as well. If you go to Galatians chapter 4, we're going to read verses 4 to 7. Uh, Melinda says a successful partnership will be working to a common goal working on the same task. And that's very true. Uh, really, in the context of our discussion tonight, the goal is for souls to be saved. And God is working towards that. And hopefully you choose to work towards that as well. You choose to open the door and accept that gift. You work on that common goal, that common task. Uh, just the way a partnership would need to. If they want to achieve a certain thing, if I was to pet the nose of the unicorn, we both had to work together to make that happen. 
Galatians 4, verses 4 to 7. Uh, this verse is actually very similar to the, the one that we just looked at in Romans. So Galatians 4, starting in verse 4. It says, But when the time set, or when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has also made you an heir. Again, in the context of our lesson tonight, that is our goal. We want to be an heir. We want to be an heir to that gift of eternal life, that, that eternal life in heaven with God and Jesus. That's, uh, that's the ultimate goal of a Christian and hopefully of people. You know, if you want to accomplish that goal, we have to work together to make this happen. Uh, again, we talked about acceptance. We talked about how we're accepting Jesus and Jesus is accepting us. And that's the idea of both parties participating. God offers, we accept. Uh, God has the power to give us this gift. We can't earn it on our own merit, on our own actions. But he is allowing us, uh, he is gracious enough to give us grace. And he has that power. He's fulfilling his end of the bargain. And we have to fulfill our, our end of the bargain. We have to make sure that we do our part. We have to work together so that we can get this, this inheritance. That we can be heirs. That we can be a part of his family and be adopted into his family. So that's the second question I'm going to ask. Is how can we participate in the adoption into the sonship of Christ? So what are some of the things we do so that we can participate in the adoption into the sonship of Christ? Uh, it says that if you are a Christian, you are brought into the family. You're part of the family of God. So what are some of the things that we do as Christians to participate in this goal of going to heaven and serving him? What can we do? What are some of the things that we can do? Again, please put something in the comments. Uh, share your views. Share your uh, ideas in this. How can we participate in the adoption into the sonship of Christ? Uh, if you go to 1 Corinthians 15, there's another passage we're going to look at. Uh, some of the things I thought of when I was thinking of how do I participate in the adoption? How, how can I do this? Uh, really the first thing that you have to do, if you want to participate in gaining that goal of internal life with him, is you have to have that first step of belief. You have to have faith. You have to understand that he is God. And he's given us the scriptures, which lays out the plan of salvation and lays out the way he would like us to live, uh, to live that life, to be more like Christ. And we have to believe that. That's really the first step. If you don't believe it, you're not going to do it. You're not going to act on it. So if you want to participate in the adoption, you have to actually believe that you can be adopted. You have to take that first step in actually believing it. Then the next thing that you can do relates to the ad acceptance lesson that we did last week where we can open the door and we can accept that gift of salvation. Uh, again, he's laid out how we can do that in the scriptures. Uh, we can repent, we can be baptized, we can accept that gift of salvation. We can do our part, participate, so that we can become adoption. Oh, Joyce has a good, uh, a good comment where she says you have to read the supporting documents. It's very true. If you're being adopted, it's often a legal process, which has documents, and you have to read those documents. You have to make sure that you're, you're doing what needs to be done. And that is similar in our case. We have the scriptures. Those are our supporting documents. Those are the things that go along with this, this adoption, this goal that we all have to be heirs in the sonship of Christ. If you go to 1 Corinthians 15, we're going to read verse 58. It's a really good verse that really sums up uh, very well how to live and how to live your life according to the scriptures. Uh, Tina says you must identify as an heir. You have to confess Jesus is Lord. That's all part of that, that accepting, that a part of that accepting that gift. That's a very good comment too. So 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15 and verse 58. So 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 58. It says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord. So again, the audience here is Christians. These are people who have opened the door. Uh, they've accepted the gift of salvation. And it actually applies uh, very much to the passage. When we, when we read that passage last week about Jesus knocking, he wanting them to open the door, he's telling that to Christians. Uh, we often use that example to show people accepting the gift of salvation, and it does apply to that. 
And in Revelation, uh, the church at Laodicea, they were going through some tough times, and they were um, not working as hard as they should be. They weren't as dedicated to Jesus as they should have been, and they've essentially pushed him away. They pushed him away from their lives. And he's saying, hey, I'm knocking at the door. Let me back in. Let me back into your life. And in this passage, that's really showing what we should be doing. This is how we can let him back into our life if maybe we pushed him away or maybe we were just starting our journey, our journey and we are letting him into our lives. It's something that might be new to us. Uh, Melinda has a, pass, or a comment where she says, one verse we read says, our hearts cry, Abba, Father. And that was in both. That was in two passages, in Galatians and Romans. So we recognize he is our spiritual father. He acknowledges that closeness that closeness he wants to have with us. So that's very true. That's all part of that acceptance and that adoption into his family, that gaining us into his family. We recognize him as our father, and he shows that he wants to be close to us. He wants to have that relationship uh, with us. There's some other passages about how Jesus wanted to gather his uh, gather the people together, the the um, Jewish people under his wing like a, a hen ja gathers her chicks under their wings. Yeah, he wants to have that closeness as a family, that adoption. As the adopted child, we do have that part to play, uh, just like the parents do have their part to play. Again, we often put the emphasis on the parents. The parents adopt the child, so we think God adopts us. And it's true. Uh, God does have all the power to bring us into his family. There's nothing we can do on our own merit to earn our way in there. He has to accept us. We see in the scriptures, though, that he does accept us. If we are willing to go to him, we're willing to be dedicated to him, he will accept us. That is something that is a guarantee. Then, after we're accepted, we have to continue keeping him in our life. We have to continue our role in that uh, adoption process, uh, our role as being uh, children of God. And it says here, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord. Again, this is written to Christians. We should always be steadfast, immovable, always working towards the work of the Lord, always doing our best to serve him. That's how we participate in the adoption of Jesus Christ, uh, the adoption as children of God. Uh, as an adopted child, we have our part to play. He's knocking the door, and we have to answer when we answer, we have the responsibility to be steadfast, to be immovable, to be always abounding in the work of the Lord. And when we do that, we know that it's not going to be in vain because he's going to hold up his part of the partnership. He's going to hold up his part. God cannot lie. He's always going to be there for us if we are willing to accept him, if we're willing to have that partnership. Uh, something is very encouraging. Uh, it's very encouraging to know that we can trust him. Uh, we can trust what he has written to us in the scriptures. Uh, we can trust that he is always going to be there for us. Uh, all we have to do is accept those things. Uh, we accept the gift of salvation. Uh, we accept him into our lives through our study of the supporting documents uh, and the adoption process and put those things to practice in our lives. And as we live our lives, we're going to have a, a better life as sons of God. Uh, we are going to experience bumps along the way, but we are going to have a better life because of that with Again, the ultimate goal of get being heirs uh, of the gift of eternal life in heaven after this life. Uh, we got another comment off to the side here. This is a, a non-Facebook comment. It says, don't keep looking for our physical parents to relate to them. Uh, recognize our true parent. Uh, so that's true. Uh, some people aren't as blessed to have very supportive physical parents. Uh, some people are. I don't know. I felt I was. But some people don't have that. Uh, when they're accepted into the family of God, uh, you have brothers and sisters in Christ. You have people around you that you can treat as your brothers and sisters. Uh, we've, had, we've had a guy from Texas uh, joining us in our studies uh, recently, and, it, and he does feel like part of the family. He's been joining us consistently over the last while. Uh, and he does feel like a part of the family, even though I don't know how far away he is, a couple thousand miles. He's pretty far away, but he still feels like part of the family. And again, that's through this gift of technology that some of us have actually discovered uh, since the pandemic. So that is a, a blessing in, in times of trouble. But we can have that family. We can have our brothers and sisters in Christ, near and far, uh, physical and virtual. And we can also have our Father. We can have our Father in heaven guiding us. Uh, we have to do our part again, studying those documents and accepting his guidance through those things. 
We have that power of the Holy Spirit within to help us, give us the strength to get through those tough times that we are going to experience because hard times aren't going to go away as children of God. But as we do that, we are participating in the adoption of the Sonship of Christ. We are participating in this, uh, I, I don't know, I, I still feel kind of odd saying partnership, but it is a partnership. He's adopting us into his family. It's, it's something that we are together. Uh, we have that uh, father and child uh, relationship. I guess that, maybe that's a better word. We're, we're in that relationship with God. And as we do that, we will have uh, that gift that he is offering to everybody, that gift of eternal life with him. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for listening. Uh, let's close our Bible study in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, giving us uh, so many things, especially giving us that gift of eternal life that anybody can accept uh, by showing us your love through giving us your son to die on the cross for us, that we can have that uh, eternal life with you and that this life of peace that we can have on the earth with that knowledge of knowing that we are going to have that life with you to help us through these tough times that we experience on the earth. Uh, we thank you for giving us your scriptures so that we can study them and use them uh, for the situations that we face uh, during our time here. And I pray that we can study that, that we can make sure that we're familiar with the things that you would like us to do, with the, the wisdom that you've put forth for us in the scriptures, and pray that we can put those things to practice in our lives. I uh, thank you for uh, accepting us into your family, for adopting us into this, this family of God. And I pray that we can do our best to make the most out of every opportunity that we have in participating in this adoption and participating in this relationship that we do have with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, be safe, be well, and God bless.